Hello everyone and welcome to the Life in the Universe pandemic series, a set of short talks about everything to do with life in the universe. And in this second last talk, uh, I want to talk about books uh, that you can read to do with astrobiology. I often get emails from students and people in the wider community simply asking me, I I'm really interested in astrobiology, I want to get into this subject, what sort of books can I read? Now, uh, I've got a few books here I thought I'd talk about. There's a couple of things I should say. First of all, there are a lot of very good astrobiology books, and some of the good ones are actually in my office, and I can't get access to my office because of the pandemic. So I've selected some books that I've got here in my house, and I'll talk about those. And the second thing I should say is it's highly invidious to talk about particular books. There are, of course, an enormous number of excellent books that are either directly related to astrobiology or related to it in some way that you can get hold of. I really recommend going out there and looking on Google, Amazon, anywhere else, and trying to find those books. So today, what I thought I'd do is just talk about some examples of interesting books to read, and you can go and find related books um, elsewhere. So the first book uh, I'm going to talk about, uh, and I'm afraid this is completely shameless, uh, but um, and I offer no apology for it, is this textbook, an outstanding textbook called Astrobiology, Understanding Life in the Universe. Uh, this is my textbook. And it's in the second edition. The reason why I actually raise it is because the second edition was released only yesterday. This arrived on my doorstep um, yesterday morning, uh, Astrobiology, Understanding Life in the Universe. And this is a book uh, directed at uh, undergraduates, but in fact, anyone interested in astrobiology covering everything from the origin of life through to the future of our own civilization and um, everything in between. It's not the only astrobiology textbook. There's an outstanding textbook in its third edition that was written at the Open University and published by Cambridge University Press, An Introduction to Astrobiology. So you can go and look for that. Uh, I would show you that, but that's in my office. There's a very good short book called A Brief Introduction to Astrobiology, written by David Catlin. It's a small little book about this size, uh, much easier to read on a train uh, than this great tome. But that's a very good book if you want to get uh, a very quick overview of the field of astrobiology and the sciences that connect with astrobiology. So all of those books are worth uh, looking at. So those are, those are textbooks that you can get hold of to do with astrobiology, but that are generally readable by a variety of, of different audiences. So I recommend those, of course. Um, origin of life, that's one of the big questions in astrobiology. There are lots of nice books out there. This is one uh, called Genesis by Robert Hazen. Uh, I like this book. It's a discussion of the origin of life and the sort of geological context of the origin of life, thinking about how it might have happened, uh, what might be the chemistry of the early uh, types of molecules and cells that, that uh, represented early life on Earth. There are other books as well. Uh, David Diemer, who did some pioneering experiments on early cell membranes, has written some very good books on the origin of life and the chemistry of the origin of life. As I say, there are plenty out there um, on that particular topic. Once we have a planet and life has originated, what makes a, a planet habitable? What are the conditions that allow life to persist? That's something I've talked about on and off throughout these talks. There are lots of books you can find. This is one I happen to have in my house here called How to Build a Habitable Planet. It's rather a thick book uh, and in some places really quite technical. But if you want a pretty solid book about what makes a planet habitable and what are the conditions that allow for the origin and persistence of life. Uh, this is a very good book to read, the story of Earth from the Big Bang to humankind, pretty much self-explanatory, uh, but that's a very good tome if you want to get into the details of um, a habitable world. Uh, there are other good books. This is also one I happen to have in my house um, called The Earth Machine, The Science of a Dynamic Planet. Uh, not so much about biology and astrobiology, more about Earth sciences and what powers our planet. If you want to get a good idea about uh, the geology of a planet that can give rise to life, the one planet we know, planet Earth, uh, this is a nice book uh, to read. One of the great questions in astrobiology is, is this planet unusual? Uh, if we have other planets in the universe that can give rise to life, will they inevitably give rise to life? Uh, and will that life inevitably become intelligent? So the question we might simply paraphrase as, is the Earth unique in the universe, or is it a template for all sorts of similar planets across the universe that might harbor life? There are lots of wonderful books 
uh, addressing this question. Uh, one of them that I happen to have here in my house is Rare Earth uh, by, by Peter Ward and uh, Donald Brownlee. This is a book that uh, the title is self-explanatory. This particular book takes the view that the Earth is a rare planet and uh, one of a kind because of all the different concatenation of physical, chemical, and biological events that led to intelligent life. And it proposes that in fact, we won't find other Earth-like planets. David Waltham um, has a book called uh, Lucky Planet. I think that's the title of it, which is also a very nice investigation. Dirk Schultz McCook has wrote, written a very nice book um, proposing that complex life is common throughout the universe. So you might want to get hold of that. So there are plenty of books looking at the nature of Earth uh, in the context of astrobiology and life. Is it a, an unusual uh, world? I'm a microbiologist, so again, uh, shamelessly, I'm going to plug a micro book. This is a book that was written um, in the early 1920s. And it's actually become a bit of a classic because not only is it um, technically a good book, it's also written with sort of indescribable uh, humor and uh, levity about it. It's a fun book to read, and it really hasn't gone out of date because it describes the discovery of microbes in the 17th century and all the work that was done by Pasteur and others uh, in the 19th century and around that time to understand microbes, to understand uh, disease-causing microbes, how they were found, and some of the history and color of some of the characters involved in opening up the field of microbiology after, their, after the discovery of microbes by Van Leeuwenhoek in the late 17th century. So that's a, a fun book um, to read. Um, there is also a lot of, uh, lo there are a lot of books out there looking at uh, the structure of biology and how it's driven by physics. A particular favorite of mine is Stephen Vogel, who wrote a lot of books on the connection between biology and physics. This one is called Cat's Paws and Catapults, which is looking at the physics of biology. Um, I've already pushed one of my own books, so I wasn't going to show you the cover of another one, but I've also written a book called The Equations of Life, How Physics Shapes Evolution, that was a sort of popular look at how physics drives evolution and biology and how uh, evolution is much more constrained by physics than we tend to think about. The solutions to life are much more narrow than we tend to um, than we tend to assume. So The Equations of Life is another book that I've written, but I do really recommend Stephen Vogel's books on physics and biology, really well written, um, uh, easy to read and fascinating books. So then we've got this life and it's emerging under the laws of physics and it's progressing in some sort of um, evolutionary, uh, not preordained, but some sort of direction as evolution occurs. And we might eventually end up with intelligence or not as the case may be. And in one of these courses early on, I talked about the Fermi paradox, this, I, this question about um, extraterrestrial intelligence. If intelligences are common across the universe, why don't we observe them? Why don't we get visited by intelligence? And there are lots of fascinating books about extraterrestrial intelligence. In fact, it seems that publishers can't get enough about extraterrestrial intelligence. So you can go and find lots of books. Uh, one I happen to have here in my house is The Eerie Silence, Church Searching for Ourselves in the Universe by Paul Davis, who writes a lot about um, popular science and life in the universe. And this book is about the eerie silence. Its name is uh, self-explanatory. Why don't we find aliens landing on the earth? So you can find other books about the Fermi paradox. There's another book, I forget who it's written by, called 50 Solutions to the Fermi Paradox, which is also an entertaining read about the Fermi paradox. Uh, then we've got an intelligence, at least we don't know elsewhere, but certainly on this planet, we have an intelligence. What is the future of our own civilization on the Earth? How are we going to um, look after the Earth whilst colonizing outer space? And there are lots of good books you can find um, all to do with the future of humanity. Uh, the Earth in Human Hands is by David Grinspoon. This is a very nice book. He, he has done a lot of work studying the planet Venus, and this book thinks about the human future and how we're going to sustain ourselves uh, on this planet in the future. Uh, David Grinspoon is an astrobiologist, so he thinks about this very much from that sort of astrobiological perspective of life in the universe. If you are interested in astrobiology and you want to align it to thinking about the future of civilization and environmentalism, uh, this is a good book. It will satisfy your astrobiology interests and your interests in environmentalism. 
Uh, despite the fact we might look after the earth, will we in fact destroy ourselves? Here's another book that I have um, here at home uh, by Martin Rees, the Astronomer Royal. This is called Our Final Century, and it looks at some of the uh, scenarios that might end our civilization. So if you want to, um, maybe in the middle of a pandemic is not the best time to read books about the end of civilization, but maybe it is the best time to think about it. If you want to think about existential threats to our civilization and how we might mitigate them and what those problems might be, uh, this is a very good book, Our Final Century. Think about um, some of the things that may or hopefully may not end our civilization. And then finally, if you're interested to know about why we have this um, connection with the biosphere, some of the more philosophical aspects of astrobiology. There's lots of good books on philosophy and ethics in astrobiology. Here's just one I think is particularly interesting that I happen to have in my house called Biophilia by E.O. Wilson. I should say uh, E.O. Wilson's writing is actually quite delightful and any of his books are worth reading. Biophilia is an interesting book because it's about the discussion of our um, how would one put it, our affinity for biology. Why is it we have this affinity with animals and plants and microbes, as the case may be, this sort of intuitive connection with the biosphere, quite apart from our desire to preserve the biosphere because it will help our own survival. Why do we have this feeling of, of connection with biology? Well, it might be because we emerged from the biosphere or we remain in the biosphere ourselves. And so we tend to have this empathy with the rest of life on Earth. So this is an interesting question, biophilia, a love for the biosphere that E.O. Wilson um, explores. So those are just a few books. As I say, uh, I always feel uncomfortable um, recommending particular books because there are a lot of them out there and those are not, I mean, those are very good books, but there's no particular reason for picking them other than, than, than that I'm stuck in my house and those are just some of the books I have. But there are plenty of very good astrobiology books on the origin of life, the emergence of life, the evolution of life, our own civilization, uh, the possibility of life elsewhere. There are lots of very good books on exoplanets, the search for exoplanets, and what we might find in the future on other exoplanets. So those are just some suggestions. Uh, some of you may have been sent to this video by a future me uh, when you've asked for um, ideas about books on astrobiology. So there you are, but continue to look out uh, for them. This video will go out of date very quickly. There will be lots of uh, good new books out there you can find as well. But the good news is there's plenty of good material. There's also plenty of good videos on YouTube about astrobiology from various institutions and individuals who have uh, given lectures in different places. So you can find uh, good information for astrobiology there. In the meantime, continue the reading. Uh, use the pandemic to read everything you can about astrobiology. Look after yourselves and thank you for joining me. Bye.